Hey Godzilla fans, it's Godzilla Week here at Couch Soup, and you can look forward to a week-long blast of Godzilla content, including my review of Godzilla Minus One, and some awesome articles on all things Godzilla, and of course, now it's time for The Monarch Files. your weekly breakdown of each episode of Monarch Legacy of Monsters, part of the Watching Now series on Couch Soup. On the task force, we have Brandy. Hello. Lily Kay. Hello there. <laughs> and our returning guest Godzilla fan, Alex McCumbers. Hello. It is a wondrous day once again. And of course, I am your host, Dan Morris, and we are here to talk about episode four of Monarch, titled Parallels and Interiors. Before we get into this episode, uh, Brandy and I actually did just see Godzilla Minus One. And we kind of wanted to give a quick little non spoilerly first impressions of the, the movie. Uh, of course, you can read my full review over on CouchSoup.com right now. But just to give you guys a little taste of what we thought, it is one hell of a movie. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's not only the best Godzilla movie I've ever seen, but it's actually one of the best films of the year, in my opinion. And I think mm. a lot of people are agreeing with that. Um, yeah. It's got some of the coolest action for a Godzilla film. Plus, it's a damn, damn good World War II epic. Like, oh my God, does it make you think and feel? It's got a lot of heart to it. Yep. Randy? I agree. Like, the... Normally, like in monster movies, the characters are just kind of an afterthought. It's like the monster is the the thing. But this was just this was so much more. It was like that you gave a crap about the people. It was it was amazing. Like I just I loved every single character that they had. Like you you were rooting for them, but you were also <laughs> rooting for the monster. So it's really hard. But it was just it was great. I loved it. And that's what makes that movie special, because I've said it on this show before that the the human element, the human characters, nobody gives a crap. We just want to watch them get squished while the monsters fight. <laughs> this is the first time, like legitimately, the humans are actually very relevant, very important, very dynamic. They're very well written and they actually matter. And I actually care about what happens to them. So it was a, it was a very different experience when it comes to a Godzilla film. It was very good. Very good. Nice. You, know, you said in a previous chat with me and you, you're like, this might be my favorite Godzilla movie. It's, that's still the case mm -hmm. after, you know, the 24 hours since you've seen it. Yeah, absolutely. This is easily now one of, if not my favorite Godzilla movies ever made and seen. Mm -hmm. It's it's just so good. So good and, in so many ways. And now it's time for the collectibles. Let's see that. Uh, what's the, the like where they take the CG model that mm. they used in the film and turned it into a figure. Yeah, let's get with some of those, please. <laughs> yeah, I know. Of course, you, Alex, are about to go see the movie. Lily, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not showing there, right? No, nope. oh. and it's not, even not at all. So, no, nope. uh, why not? I don't know because Hungarians are stupid. <laughs> what can I tell you? Like you know, I I can't always so many things because of distribution problems i uh, have no idea so mm -hmm. usually if it's from korea or japan forget about it and those are usually your favorite things <laughs> yeah basically yeah my favorite unfortunate mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. have you been able yeah, to see any godzilla films in theater uh only the the american ones that's ah. it well, at least you got that. Because even still, like the Godzilla 2014 movie, seeing that the first time in theaters with like the blood oh, yeah. of the Godzilla roar was oh, mm -hmm. so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. But like, you know, I mm -hmm. want to see this. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of distribution, that's it, why I was held up on Shin Ultraman for so long. It took uh, several years for that to come to Blu-ray. So whenever they're like, oh, we're doing a limited release in theaters, I'm like, well, I guess I know what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> yeah. I ain't missing it this time. Yeah, Lily, with as much as you like the like the Korean films and the mm. Japanese films and things like that, I think you would, I think yeah. you would like this. I, I think so as well. Like you know, yeah. I keep reading about it. And I'm like, I want to see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, if you want to catch my full review again, you can catch that over at CouchSoup.com. It's great. I, I try to not get too spoilerly and give just like a general summary of what I liked about the movie, both Godzilla and the, the actual story. Um, 
and like it was hard like i it's a it's a long review and i had to hold yeah. back and i even put a little blurb in there and i i said like i'm gonna have to get my kid therapy because she just like <laughs> crawled up in my lap <laughs> at the end of it it was just bawling <laughs> yeah that was a fun anecdote because like, was like she was oh, crying shit. and then i was like what's wrong and like she was upset about the ending of course and I was like, oh, you're like me when I was a kid and I watched Godzilla 1985 for the first time. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, it's hard because like, you know, you're, you're laughing in parts, you're crying in parts. It's very, very emotional, but it's, it's emotionally draining in a good way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, it's got a lot of heart. <laughs> Do you get to see everything everywhere all at once in theaters? Yes. No. Mm -mm. Okay, so that's that might be one of my favorite theater experiences mm -hmm. ever, and I'm curious to see how that compares for another time, maybe. Mm -hmm. Because we got to get on to our mm -hmm. breakdown of this week's episode. Let's start off with our non-spoiler first impressions of the most recent episode of Monarch. Stakes increased. Um, I mean, this is one of those things where, like we talked about in the in the last episode how i'm starting to care about these mm -hmm. characters and the, their well-being is like something that the the story can kind of like threaten and in this like all of our main cast is in danger because they're stranded in alaska and i used to live in alaska in juno which is very much like mild alaska <laughs> but uh just the thought of being out in that wasteland in the cold is terrifying and then when she like gets her when May gets her leg wet, I'm right, like she's doing the non spoiler she's impressions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, either way, the uh, the the stakes are high, and so yeah. it's it's one of those things where like there's there's a threat element now, mm -hmm. and it's not always the monster, which I appreciate. Lily, how are you doing? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm getting I'm, I'm I'm getting salty the salt levels are, are going up uh, they are starting to do my least favorite thing uh, with any TV show or movie is that the magic of happening off screen mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I call it uh, so they did that a lot in this episode and I was like <laughs> <laughs> so you know there's one less Russell in here, which is very annoying. <laughs> yes, For my yes, Russell yes. Uh, levels, I'm like, I need more Russells. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. I still think Kentaro is the best character. and it, This episode kind of proves it. Um, <laughs> I just fucking hate his haircut. Like, do something about that. <laughs> 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 so annoying. Anyway, um, yeah, the sword levels are rising. They need to do some redemption in the next episodes. Let's just put it that way. All right. They're definitely keeping like a really deliberate pace currently, right? Like, yeah, they really need mm -hmm. to bring this show somewhere. But mm -hmm. it's it's interesting to see how they're like, I don't know, defiant, I guess, in a way of mm -hmm. like what you would expect. They just kind of chug along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they need to bring it somewhere and not in the last two episodes. How about you, Brandy? Where are you at? I mean, yeah, I'm kind of it, it felt like. It felt like a filler episode. I mean, there was still like some some interesting action, some, you know, danger elements, of course, but it's just like, okay, there's just a lot of like back and forth, like memories to, you know, just just a lot. I don't know. It was difficult at times to understand what the hell was going on for me. See, now I hadn't really, we haven't even discussed this beforehand of like how we felt about this episode. And I agree that it's definitely a weaker episode. It's a bit slower, but I also felt like it did a lot of things that were inevitable. Mm -hmm. And we, we should have seen them coming because, like, obviously there's been a lot of like hints at mysteries of how characters came to be and how they met and whatnot. And this episode kind of bridged that gap, but it still gave us a little bit of that action. We got a little bit of danger. Um, it barely moved the plot forward and of course mm -hmm. it didn't jump anywhere like we mostly stayed in 2015 for the most part <laughs> but hopefully with the next episode things will improve mm. Mm. i think the show might make a better book than a show that's just the case with anything though isn't it yeah like, but usually... some of these like extended things mm -hmm. especially in today's like landscape and what we expect out of certain shows I don't know. 
I'd I'm be interested to read a book version of this. I'm holding out hope. I feel like it's got a lot of potential still. I don't think it's oh, definitely yet. Because mm-hmm. I think if there is indeed 10 full episodes, we've got six more episodes to come. A lot can happen in those six episodes. Mm-hmm. So let's get into it for this episode with our spoiler review. This is where we're going to break down the majority of like the most important scenes and to like talk about what was important, what could have been better. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of pick things apart a little bit. So interestingly enough, this episode opens up in Utah mm-hmm. and we're all like, where the f- why are we in Utah? What's happening? There's dinosaurs uh, in Utah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we meet a new character that we've not seen before. And it's just this woman now in the middle of the desert with a little wagon Caravan, whatever you want to call that metal twinkie wagon, <laughs> an RV, <laughs> an an RV. <laughs> yeah. uh, and there's an alarm going off, and she gets some intense readings and has to call it in. And it's like, okay, cool. <laughs> the only thing about that scene that really jumped out at me is it looked like she had cans of monster on her. <laughs> belt. And I'm, of course, last week we were joking about monster, monster energy, drink, energy yeah. and we're like, ah, she got monster juice. That's funny. <laughs> She also looks like Laura Bailey. Or at least that's what I thought. I was like, this is that Laura Bailey? <laughs> I yeah. What, what I, I thought was funny, when that, when that scene showed up, I was like, oh, Tom's going to be pissed off because right. I immediately thought that it was like, okay, the last episode you get the monster coming at them and then mm. somehow they're in, like in Utah or some shit, like, like time passed oh, or something. <laughs> I'm like, no, no. I'm like, okay, okay, calm down. It's just monarch something. <laughs> yeah, there was definitely that moment of like, oh man, some people are going to be upset because they're not addressing the cliffhanger at the end of the yeah. last episode. <laughs> Do we know who this character is, this Barnes woman? Just says, yeah, no. Just that she's uh, Dr. Barnes and she mans Outpost 47. That was pretty much the majority of the information I was. I like her vibe. I like what she's got going on. Mm-hmm. all this like analog tech and books and plants and shit like cool we do come back on the cliffhanger ending the the gang is there they're being attacked by that uh monster the titan and it's uh rushing to attack everybody and kentaro tries to distract it with a flare which kind of works sort of it's a long enough for they're they're able to run away and i think this is probably where you're getting upset lily because they they run away and then apparently this monster is really slow it's, Again, it's like, the magic it's of things really happening off screen. Slowly, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, they're hiding they're in, in a cave. cave. We get the yeah. opening credits. It Where the hell did this come from? <laughs> and they're in a cave, and it's like you oh. know, it's 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 the magic of happening it off screen. Like how mm-hmm. they how did they get away? It happened off screen. They, they got away, and I'm uh, like, the they were fuck saving are you doing? with this one. <laughs> they're like i don't know if we have the money to keep this pangolin thing moving yeah. uh, <laughs> it's like this thing can dig underground like and yet it can't find them in a cave yeah there was definitely okay. some of that going through okay. my mind at that point of like they it can't sense them underground and yeah. and it apparently follows heat uh yeah. as we find out later on and obviously human body has heat so mm-hmm. i'm like Especially four of them together, yeah, huddled in a cave. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I could come up with is like, okay, maybe it's just enough of a barrier with the ice that it's making it so it can't uh, take no. them. I guess but sure. it moves. I think it's on their eyes. So like, the only way I can think of to explain this is it's got kind of an echidna face, and echidnas can't see too well. Mm. Maybe that's, that's as far as they need it. Yeah, but then it can feel heat. So, like, you know, yeah, the whole yeah. theory is like going out of the window. That's not a very good theory, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, it's still a cool monster. I do wish that we would have gotten more of the, like, the chase, so to speak. Yeah, I was going to say that it would have been better if we actually saw them, like, hey, mm-hmm. look, there's a ledge. We jumped on the ledge. Oh, there's a cave. Let's hide in here rather than it just jump cuts to them like smashing through some ice and now they're in a cave. But this is why I think the setting is more dangerous than the monster because mm-hmm. we come to find out this thing chases heat. So anytime they try to get more heat, they're attacked again. And so it mm-hmm. kind of puts them back to square one. Yeah. And so like the survival situation of the episode is definitely the most like 
uh, intense part it's of very it. Very true. And like the fact that this thing absorbs heat and it turns into like a monster from Lost Planet, <laughs> devouring mm-hmm. all the heat. And like you said, they they can't even try to get warm because if they try to get warm, it attracts the monster. Which of course mm-hmm. they don't learn that until much later. And more importantly, during that scene when they're hiding in the cave, May slips and falls through some water and gets her legs soaked wet. And yep. they're in like below freezing temperatures. That's not good. <laughs> like very not yeah. good. Like just to put it in perspective, even in Juno, if you heard somebody went into the water, they're probably dead. Like it, in just baseline, you are likely not surviving. So to do this in further north Alaska in like sub zero temperatures, probably like it's a miracle she keeps her legs. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was definitely mm-hmm. like, oh shit, like her legs are dead. The episode then takes a bit of a shift because it changes times, but this time it goes to 2014, a year earlier. And we actually see these events of Kantaro putting on an art exhibit and he meets May, which this is what I was talking about earlier where I'm like, okay, this is stuff that I feel like was going to happen. We needed to see this because we know there was all this tension between yeah, the backstory. Mm-hmm. We know they had a relationship. We know it didn't end well, but we don't know any of the details. So we're finally getting that in these little jump backs to 2014 where they first meet each other. It's cute. I think this whole section is kind of adorable. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very cute, but you also see right off the bat, May is very sketchy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah I do yeah, computer yeah. shit. That's it. That's all she says. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I really I like her whole thing too. Yeah. She's like, I, oh, I've got a phone because I like buttons. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> I dug mm-hmm. the um, constant back and forth where they would just switch between English and Japanese on the fly. I thought that yeah, that's was really cool. cool. Yeah. And then when they met, like, Kentaro's friend at the bar. and This like, place the- is a dump. <laughs> <laughs> I like and, that whole bar. It's so cool. Asshole, so that's good. I like that. A little, like, fancy speakeasy hole in a wall type place. That mm-hmm. I don't like bars. I like those sorts of places, though. Those are Yeah, cool. it was much more chill. Like, obviously, they mm-hmm. were saying, like, it's before he was officially open. But I'd be super down to go to a place like that and drink some expensive ass Japanese whiskey. And like this quiet place with some cool lighting. Yeah. I've never had Japanese whiskey. Santori, I think, is the common one you can buy out here. Mm. Yeah. Pretty good. Lily, you're awfully quiet right now. Give us salt. Nah. (laughs) I didn't have a problem with these bars, to be honest. It's like, you know, it was, you know, we kind of figured out that it's going to happen at some point or another. Didn't think it's going to take up this much time, like Mm -hmm. an entire episode. That was the only thing that I was like, okay, so we're like getting into it. Uh, And I think if you're going to take up an entire episode, like looking back at things that happened to one of the, well, two of the characters, then it could have gone a bit deeper, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like it's, not just their first meeting, but, but like, you know, back and forth of how they actually got apart and what happened there. Because I think like, given where they are now, with like... That's kind of the more important thing, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Like, understanding... So, like, so there's more of that. Why they hate each other. Much, though. Yeah. It yeah, did yeah, a really like, good what, job, though, I think, of interweaving the past with the present and how it all yeah. kind of intertwines and relates. The whole show does that pretty well. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like he's kind of hallucinating, sort of, but remembering at the same time mm. because he's like passed out I'm, cold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the transitions between the scenes were fucking yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, really, like, really good. From an editor viewpoint, I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was it was really good. It's like, like you know, he's struggling. Mm-hmm. Like with consciousness, but it's like he's remembering, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. The set designs are real good too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, they were really cool. Dialing us back a little bit because before that, there's the moment where the group is trying to figure out what they're going to do because they're stranded in the middle of nowhere and it's freezing. It's going to get dark, and they got to get May somewhere before she freezes to death. And there's this moment that for me was a big aha because Kentaro mentioned mm-hmm. seeing a structure from the plane mm-hmm. which I was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> I 
So he says we should go look for the structure that he saw from the plane. But this is where we get that really hard clashing now with May. Like May is obviously very jolted with Kentaro and just she's angry. She's just like very anti Kentaro at this point. And mm-hmm. she's just like doesn't even fathom for a second that he's onto something. And then we start getting those mixes of like the current situation jumping back into the past where Kentaro is taking her to the club, getting her the drink. We're seeing them happy. And then it jumps back to the present where she is just like tearing his guts out mm-hmm. with how upset she is with him. Like to the point where she's like, I, I don't care if you leave, like whatever. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs> It's just, I, I'm not gonna lie, that theme was so upsetting. Like, everyone just is like, oh, yeah, go and fuck off a little. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, except well, for Kate. Kate was like, don't let him but, go alone. Don't leave. You but know? she let him go as well. Right. Like, true. she didn't go with him. And I'm yeah. like, what the yeah. fuck are you guys doing? Like, are you just letting one person from your group just wander off into the, you know, West nothingness, <laughs> basically? And I'm like, what? what's happening and and i'm not gonna lie that's where i'm like i like these characters and then they are starting to make me not like them (laughs) Mm. (laughs) it's like you know like the whole thing with we find out throughout the the memories that uh, kentaro you know remembers that he's like very open and and very sharing while may is very like closed off and not really sharing anything and now may is like not trusting him and not believing him and and suddenly she's like oh no i know better blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what are we doing with these characters well, what maybe, what is going on that's to be seen like maybe, maybe mm-hmm. we're gonna see it up there maybe kentaro did something really fucked up that like just completely destroyed her trust in him we don't know Nothing or else. maybe it's just being crazy and <laughs> yeah I don't know, based on what we know because what i gathered is that basically he just disappeared on her and that's it. Like yeah. that's, something happened. Yeah, and May mm-hmm. has like She's secret snacks or something in her bag because she yeah. really does not want to lose that thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I also think she doesn't trust anybody no. at all. She's got something, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's something we learn in these flashbacks too. Is about we actually learn about her sister. But before we get into that, there's a very important scene where the the show goes to Arlington. And we're in the Monarch base headquarters. There's a bunch of people in a control room. And we see the, was it assistant director Verdugo? Now we've mm-hmm. officially confirmed mm-hmm. that this is Verdugo. And she's talking to the Barnes, the Professor Barnes from Outpost 47. And she's explaining about the, the reading she was getting at the beginning of the episode. Now she explains that these spikes are like this, the kind of data you would get from a black hole from outer space. To me, immediately it was like ding, 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 ding. Like, what, what could this be? You know, black, is it outer space? Is it something else? But she also goes on to say that they're similar to the um, the events before G Day, and mm-hmm. specifically the readings from Jinjira and Yucca Flats. Those two places are very important. If you don't know or don't remember, Jinjira is the city that. The Mutos nested it in Godzilla 2014 and initially destroyed the nuclear power plant that mm. the Braden Brodies worked at. And then uh, the Yucca Flats was the nuclear waste disposal plant that the other Mutos egg was at that broke out in Godzilla 2014. Mm. So they're talking about the readings that they got at the in the beginning of that movie when the Mutos were coming together, essentially. Mm. So it's like, hmm. Okay, does this mean there's new Mutos? Is there another Kaiju similar to them that's able to give similar readings? What's about to happen? Is this about to turn into like a sequel, like a direct sequel to 2014? We could be seeing something big coming out of this. Hmm. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I hadn't made the the Muto connection. Whenever they said G-Day, I just assumed that it was the same reading they got when Godzilla showed up. Right, and that's exactly what it is. It was just more the relevant locations that it's specific Mm -hmm. to the Mutos and where they were at the time. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, because like we watched that scene, I was like, okay, what is Jinjira and what is Yuka Flats? Like, why? That's 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 got to be important. And then I looked it up and saw, of course, oh. 
that's right. Jinjira is where that nuclear plant was in the movie. And it's like, ah, okay, we got you mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. I was saying too, I think something that'd be really cool about this movie is if they brought back Brian Cranston's character in some sort of flashback and had I'd it. Be so cool excited. Thing. That'd be super cool. That was my, my I, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> no, but I would just geek out a little bit if it did. That's all. Yeah. All the commercials are like, Brian Cranston's in it, and he's there for like Four. 10 minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> yeah. <that's right. laughs> now we're back in Alaska, and Kentaro is out, and he's like lost in a blizzard. And this is where he starts hearing voices. Mm-hmm. And he's hearing like Kate and May yelling at him and like calling out to him. And it's like, oh, what is... Things are getting trippy now. Kentaro's visions and delusions start turning into like relevant information mm-hmm. in some form or fashion. Anyways, he passes out in the snow and then we catch up with May, Kate, and Shaw. So that's when she's like, he's like, oh, let me carry your bag. And she goes, no, he wants something. And, mm-hmm. and then Shaw's like, oh, she's getting crazy, I guess. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he says that she's getting delusional. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's definitely something <laughs> in that bag yeah. that she doesn't want people to know about. Probably Monarch, more specifically. Could but be. this feels like Ooh. one of those scenes where, like, you know, the character wanders in the de- into the desert or the wasteland and has a revelation mm. and is better for it. Like it happens in Dune. It happens all over the place. It reminded me of the part in uh, Uncharted Three when yeah, yeah, that's Nathan Drake gets about. lost in the desert it and then like. Really- like I was like getting very strong vibes of that. Mm-hmm. But there's also another um, flashback where we see past May and past Kentaro, and they're kind of like hooking up, you know, getting close to each other, getting very friendly. You know, that's where Kentaro is really opening up to her. And she's just kind of like, okay, cool, whatever. Let's have fun. And then you get that moment with the phone and the mm-hmm. I like physical buttons kind of thing. And there's this interesting transition of, She's laying in Kentaro's bed playing with this light that's projecting on the ceiling. And then it cuts to her in the future where she's laying on a cot and hallucinating about the past, it seems. Mm-hmm. Another great transition between mm-hmm. the two time periods in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's really cool, I think. And like to the credit of this episode, yes, it kind of drags that storyline out a little bit, but it does it in a really cool way with the way it intertwines things. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But but to that point, like when it's coming back to her, like before that, like they had realized that they had gone in one big circle. So they were yeah. back at right. her dad's tent. So they never actually got away at all. And that's where, uh, you know, Shul said that uh, Titans have like an interesting way of doing shit to you, basically. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, uh, I think that was what was happening to to Kentaro basically uh yeah. he just you know that's why he hears all the voices uh yeah that's why he's you know surviving mm-hmm. all of that, basically uh so yeah it was very interesting that they pulled it all together with that one sentence basically like you know yeah. you can never know what yeah, a monster does that. to you and what the aura does to you Kind yeah, of like weird and like the shit plane, happens. yeah, planes are around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I always like thought that they might have to do something kind of out there to explain the Hollow Earth stuff. Mm. And a lot of the study in the cryptid stuff, study the you know the thought experiments of cryptid stuff. Uh, they talk about ultra terrestrials and like alternate dimensions and things like that. And we know that Bigfoot's in this. Because they mentioned something about Bigfoot and a Yeti. So there mm. could be some dimensional ultra terrestrial explain aways in here. So that and could count possibly. account for the going back to the same place, going in circles. And why time feels weird in certain areas in this episode. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's true, because the events that happened with Kentaro seem to have happened at a faster pace yeah. than mm-hmm. the others. Mm-hmm. And real quick, before I get into that, I wanted to jump back into that flashback with May. Because then she gets a phone call and we actually learn who she's talking to, which is her sister named Lyra. 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 Mm-hmm. Her sister, Lyra. So now we've finally got an understanding of like, oh, she's got a sister. Her sister apparently is the only person that she's still in communication with. And we're getting a little bit more, a little bit more appeal of the onion on the mystery that is May. Like yeah. It, that's just she's forward. hiding from something. Because mm-hmm. she did not want Kentaro to take a picture of her 
like that was super shady to me. <laughs> but it seemed like they were working on a game together at some point. Yeah. Because huh. she talks about game design and there's a concept art on his wall that they point to. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking now too, thinking about the time sh- weirdness in this episode because we get another jump to Arlington in that Monarch base. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a bunch of people in a room and there's a bunch of like suits on the screen and they're talking about these readings that they found. And then you have Tim comes Tim. in. Tim. Oh, Tim. And Tim is all hot and bothered. And when he <laughs> jumps in, Verdugo's like, shut up, everyone. Tim's talking. And it's like, oh, we give a shit about Tim now, huh? And he has like this best, that great line about, he's like, you know me, it's Tim, the troll in the basement. (laughs) But now I've got shit to say. But it's Tim. This was an interesting scene because now all of a sudden uh, everyone is listening to Tim because of these readings. And he's talking about how this relates to Shaw. He must have some sort of a theory about why Shaw is important in all of this. He said Shaw wants Randa's files. They want Randa's files too. Something in Randa's files is really important. And guess who has Randa's files? May. And there's, there's definitely something going on there too because he's like, you know, this is monsters we're talking about. You guys need to be more open-minded. Like clearly they've got some sort of theory that's more than just either either it is Hollow Earth or it's more than the physical creatures that we've seen yeah that's a good point because he does specifically say like i thought people who want to study supernatural creatures would have a more open mind because it's like Mm -hmm. all right then maybe he's gone and pitched ideas for more crazy things that have been shot down and it kind of harkens back to like the old days with uh randa when he was talking about the teleporters and he's like that's not (laughs) the teleporters you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm I'm starting to think that tim has a teleporter because he gets brown fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How? How? I'm. I'm like. You know. I. I don't mind time jobs. I don't mind. You know when, whatever like that happens. But how? How are we traveling this fast? We also it's, don't know where Tim is during that call, though. Tim is crazy fast. But how? <laughs> That's my yes, question. <laughs> time could be weird. He, he can situation. teleport. <laughs> okay, Apparently. That's a solid theory. So. <laughs> Lily's theory is Tim, Tim can teleport. Right, well, that's the only is if doing, well, that's why his name is just Tim. If uh, they're yeah. doing dimension hop and stuff and there's a Mothman involved, I'll be real happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, just think about it. Like, Tim is time without an E at the end. Oh. He's what? Oh. He's a Time Lord. <laughs> He's Maybe time his lord. name is Time. <laughs> Maybe. And it's just a silent E. Yeah. Doctor Who. <laughs> All right. Okay. Done. I solved it. Yeah, you know it. That's the that's the ultimate mystery. Tim, Tim. <laughs> who the fuck is Tim? Anyway. <laughs> Tim, the basement troll. So now we get to this point where Kintaro's off having hallucinations in the snow somewhere, and then we're back on Shaw, Kate, and May, where they're in the camp. Uh, Kate's trying to warm up May, and then they have a fire going, but the the Titan get, comes, and that's when they see and realize that the Titan is attracted to heat and it's absorbing the heat. And they come up with this plan on how to like use gasoline or airplane fuel to distract it while they try to get away. Poor Duho. And that's a Mm -hmm. good shout too, that they do honor Duho in this episode. I'm glad they didn't just like, Oh, who was Duho? What was that? No, No, he gets a funeral pyre. Mm -hmm. He gets exploded. (laughs) He does explode. (laughs) There's Duho bits everywhere. (laughs) Poor Duho. There is a bit in this coming scene, though, that I want to shout out here <laughs> because there's the part where he's where Shaw's setting things up, and he talks about the explosion being as big as the celebration of VJ Day on, in Times Square. And May says, "What's VJ Day?" I had to double check this. It's what what day? Victory <laughs> over Japan Day, September second, nineteen forty five. Oh, he is shouting out. How the fuck old is Shaw? <laughs> Why would anyone mention something like that unless they know it very well? Like you know? he mentioned it like he was there. He's the Time Lord. That's the yeah. solution to everything at this point. That's, that's why mm-hmm. Tim is after Shaw because yeah. they're both Time Lords and there yeah. can only be they, one. Yeah, Wait, they're no, crashing with each other. Fuck. New theory then. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can't just pull that in as well. You gotta get the axe Shaw thing. Being really be old. of the monkeys. <laughs> He's time traveling if he's not super old then. 
He's time traveling, but slow. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a while. He's got that G fuel. <laughs> yeah. And that G fuel. So either he's really old and somehow staying young and spry as a very old person, or he's got some sort of dimensional time warp jumpy ability device, something along those lines. Something supernatural happened Some, here. Or, may, or, or maybe scientists. he was a, he was a kid when that happened, and he was mm. just happened to be there. <laughs> He'd still be pretty He'd damn. He'd still old. be old. I remember yeah. things from when I was a kid. I guess. Yeah. If he yeah, was, yeah. if he was like in his twenties, thirties, whatever, in nineteen fifty four, he's got to be old. He's a time lord. Like that's it. <laughs> yeah, everything that's else. <laughs> <laughs> the the big payoff I think in this episode is the ending with Kentaro kind of seeing this vision of his father Hiroshi, which was a really cool shot, set, like a shot mm -hmm. scene. Yeah, S scene that thing where you got the snow falling. He walks forward. He's following these pencil shavings of his father's, which those weren't real. Mm -mm. He was obviously hallucinating, and there's like there was a bunch of them in the snow. But there's no mm -hmm. way they were actually there in the middle of a blizzard, and he follows these shavings to the camp that he was looking for that had the big dome that he saw. And I, we had that really interesting moment where he's back in his art um, show and his father's there. And we had a little bit of a like, what, is this something that happened or that he wishes happened? And my conclusion based on what he was saying was he missed that because he was with May. His yeah. father was there. But he wasn't because he has a oh. line where he says, if I did, I, he's like, I didn't know that I would I would never see you again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah he was there. That's 100 yeah. percent. So do you think that's part of his guilt that he went off to be with May and missed his dad mm -hmm. being at the event? And we know the Maybe dad is traveling and going between families and stuff. So mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. think that's why that's going to be the explanation why he decided to cut ties kind of with me because i i do think that's like their main complaint of, of, like he just disappeared on her uh that he's now regretting you know not being there because that would have been the last time to see his dad so yeah. he kind of blames me in a in a way which mm -hmm. is like yeah that could absolutely it be it yeah mm -hmm. but then somehow he miraculously finds this old radio that was apparently repaired by hiroshi and then it goes back to the gang running away from the big monster. And there's a helicopter all of a sudden. Hooray! Now we've got a helicopter coming in and they need help. And luckily, May somehow is able to not get frozen to death by, by holding up a bag. Which, eh, like that felt a little too easy. Is the computer really giving off that much heat? Like, come on. Like, how did it not at least get her arms in the process? Yeah, that was weird. Whatever. Um, but anyway, Shaw blows up the, the jet fuel, distracts the monster away. They make a run for it and get in this helicopter. And then we get that closing scene where Kentaro is explaining about finding the shavings from their father. The father's still alive. And then the helicopter touches down and guess who's there? Tim! <laughs> Basement troll! Tim is the waiting. The Time Lord! has a, a different bit of a cliffhanger where he's like <laughs> very respectfully like Lieutenant Shaw, nice to meet you. And I'm like, Colonel. Oh yeah, <laughs> Colonel. He was a lieutenant <laughs> in the beginning. Colonel. It's like, mm, let, let, mm, mm, that's, where, mm. that's where most of the sword comes in for me. <laughs> and that ending, I'm like, first of all, how the fuck did Kentaro get there so fast? Like, we just had the scene where he discovers the radio and everything. We didn't even see him call for anyone at all. And then he explains the whole entire plot of how he got someone on the line and how they, you know, uh, how he got there in time. And the helicopter is there and everyone is there. And I'm like, what? Why is everything happening off screen? What the <laughs> fuck are we doing? Like, you know, and then we, we get back to whatever base. It's probably a monarch base. And Tim is there and I'm like... How the fuck did Tim get that? Like, how? 
<laughs> like you know, it's one thing to do time jobs and and, and do, do you know people traveling around and and suddenly we go from Paris to fucking Budapest or whatever. But it, that's then it's another thing of like we have a sort of a time frame of, of when characters get to somewhere, and then there's one character who just magically there, even though he wasn't there before, and I'm like. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> so the placement is very like distracting. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's weird. <laughs> No, it, it it feels like that they spend so much time on uh, uh, on the memory stuff that's important and whatnot that they just shoot in the ending and they were mm -hmm. like, well, we have to sort this out somehow. Like, we don't know how, but we have to sort it out somehow. So everyone like, just made it uh, appear. Sorry, yeah. Done. And the, it's the same thing with me <laughs> as well. Like, you know, her f the, the freaking hands didn't didn't freeze or anything and it's it's the main character syndrome like she can yeah. die because she's mm. one of the main characters so obviously there's an impossible situation and who's gonna survive the main character They're, they they keep wanting to like ground problems. us and then throwing out these kind of like uh like antithesis to the the setup yeah and, mm. and like, they, shaw is very angry about that computer getting frozen too like he was very upset. He knew she had because, it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they dropped all of uh, yeah, and all the files in the, in the ocean. Yeah. And, and, and he wants those files. Yeah. Or something, right? Yeah, on the computer. So I'm like, the of course. Frozen. So yeah, you know, I'm like, I'm a bit, because the whole setting is like, you have a monster series. Uh, we have, you know, monsters and whatnot. And they set up this monster to be very very dangerous uh just by breathing at you basically <laughs> it's like you're done but no no we we have a main character here so nothing's gonna happen <laughs> and you know i'm, I'm mm -hmm. coming at this in, in a place where i'm like that's why i'm i'm a bit slow today and tired because i spent the entire yesterday watching sweet home season two mm. uh and and you know i can't have but compare the two because you know there even if you're a fucking main character, you're dead if you're in a situation where you can die. And I'm like, why Why are we keeping it safe again? Like, you know, then don't put it into a, a monster setting or don't put in a monster that is so dangerous that it breeds at you and you, you fucking freeze to that. Like, mm -hmm. you know. This need could have been structured slightly differently and it made mm -hmm. way more sense. Oh, yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. Great, and mm -hmm. I did so, think Duho was going to have a bigger part <laughs> yeah. oh no it was obvious from the get go in, in episode ah, yeah. three that they only putting it him in there because someone has to die so we know yeah. it's dangerous but, but then of course it has dangerous. to be the most they... lovable one oh, of, okay, course. He, of course he was too good like he was yeah. too mm -hmm. likable that they had to kill but him then, like you know that's the thing like they, they bring in an extra character they quickly kill him to establish that this is a dangerous monster and then all four of them survive and I'm like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you, I, you I, kind I, of Fuck yourself over with that. Lily wants great. death, guys. Yeah. Lily <laughs> needs death. Somebody I thought was at least gonna lose to limbs. Die. Then we get that scene with her holding up the bag, and I'm like, "Are you really gonna tell me the bag is gonna stop her from dying right now?" I'm like, eh. yeah, they could have lost her legs. Like, she could have got some cool full metal alchemist legs. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, way better. I, then, but like, how much time did did it take for Duo to freeze to that? Like, freaking a few seconds. seconds. <laughs> And me is like laying there for like a minute or so, and I'm like, but she had chocolate in her system. That's sorry, yeah. That's <laughs> <it's solution. laughs> oh, so you're you're getting <laughs> really hard on this salt right now, Lily. So I think we need to hurry up and move on to the episode rating, so you can justify all your salt right now. <laughs> okay. But before we do that, I want to shout out that we did get that shot of the light in the ground, which did yeah. look yep. like an opening to the Hollow Earth. Oh, yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. So. Potentially, that's like an one of the first openings of the Hollow Earth in the Mouth of the Earth. That's like cracked open, and that maybe that's where we start getting some of these new kaiju that are going to start popping up in the movies. Maybe, maybe not. Um, and before we get up the episode ratings, I wanted to shout out that we did see the preview for next episode, which is going to be called The Way Out. It's going to be 50 oh. minutes long. Ooh. So we know it's longer. It's a whole 10 minutes longer almost. 
Um, and the description says, Kate's painful memories of G-Day come flooding back as she treks through the ruins of San Francisco with Gintaro and May. So the trio How is the all they get to what he did and going to San Francisco. <laughs> like, yeah, like it obviously yeah. has to do with the troll basement troll. Him troll. Him. Oh, yeah, with the time travel right. thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's gonna just transport them down to San Francisco. Yeah. I mean, them, um, I'm interested in Shaw. I mean, video. Where the I'm interested in that episode he? because they're going to be walking through the ruins of San Francisco, which I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, that'd cool. be interesting. That could be interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyways, let's go on to our episode ratings. And Lily, I'm going to let you start. <laughs> <laughs> You're already uh, there. <laughs> do it. Should I be really mean or just, just you know, finalize? Let him have it. Go for it. Uh, I love Kentaro. That's I'm gonna put mm -hmm. that out there, and I'm happy that we saw him more in this one. But it's still a six. Mm. It's like you know, it didn't. Maybe I shouldn't have watched it after Sweet Home. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that was so fucking good that I was it like. <laughs> I will say it is hard after watching minus one and then watching this episode. I was like, yeah, okay. I can't let it. I can't I'm let glad it. I saw okay. this first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Probably. It's a, it's a good thing. Yeah. I, no, it's a six. It's there. Were two, like, I don't like when things happening off screen, especially when it's like right at the beginning, like between the same scene it's mm -hmm. just like you know we're running away and then suddenly we're in a cave and we never see how we got to that cave i don't, I, I don't like those stuff i don't like this whole like suddenly people appear out of nowhere thing so i'm like you know and then if if you're gonna put such high stakes as i said it then fucking do something with it like don't be afraid to kill off your characters for example because Otherwise, it's just it, it becomes very cartoonish. I'm not gonna lie. Like, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, they got away because they are the main characters, but they Yay. still have to tell their story before Come they on. kill them off. You ha they have Come to make on. you care. That, that, yeah, but that, <laughs> don't put that I mean, Metal Gear gives situation. you all that shit after they're dead. <laughs> yeah, don't don't put them in a situation where they can potentially die. Yeah. <laughs> or at you least know. they need to do it better, where it's like. The death is coming. Oh no. And then last second something intervenes and saves them where they very well would have died otherwise. So that keeps that danger. I mean, that's that's real what happens present. here. <laughs> well, no, no. She was yeah. she was experiencing the danger that should have killed her. Yeah. So I'm saying like the monster should have been barreling down on her, like about to like eat her face. And then something stops it right before it's about to nom on her face. Yeah, like the explosion. I don't know something not, more not dramatic, the, the, not something where she's actively experiencing the death thing. Yeah, it doesn't kill her. I mean, yeah. right I guess the the this. thing had to like kill the laptop in some way. Yeah, like, I, I think May should have some sort of I don't know, like a like some sort of recurring like pain through the entire thing or like trauma from the entire experience, and she's just mad at everybody involved. Like there needs she's to be already mad at everybody. Right. Everyone like she already hates everybody and doesn't trust <laughs> and anybody. I, and also, also a final point. I'm sorry, but she's thanking Kate. My mm -hmm. Kendall yeah. saved their asses. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, and he like looked at her like like you thought it was their eye contact, and then mm -hmm. he's like. Yeah. Okay, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah, yep. exactly. Like, I would be like, bitch, I saved your ass. It's like, like yeah, I got the pencil shavings. Come on, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> pencil. Brandy, so what's your rating? Six. Uh, I'm I'm gonna give it like a seven. You know, it's like nice. I've been I've been rating them <laughs> like really high. Uh, but this one, this one just felt, I don't know, like a hollow earth. Uh, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> that Little hollow. Hello. <laughs> it's crazy, don't worry. So it's seven. Yes, we are. Yes. Too nice. Shush. What about you, Alan? Shush. I'm actually going to go in the middle and say six and a half. <laughs> Because I think it's it's a well shot episode, but yeah, there's it is. Yeah. you know yeah. structural yeah. and pacing issues and. So I don't know. I wish it would have gone just slightly differently, but I do like I that know. danger element. So 
Like six and a half, I think. Yeah. It was really weird. Like the mm-hmm. whole like it seemed like they were not at that camp for very long before mm-hmm. the monster attacked. And then obviously like Kentaro's like there. And I'm like, what the Timey Wimey. <laughs> There's something. Yeah. There's no way he could have gotten there so fast. What did you just do that? No. That yes, you did. He <laughs> did. He just did that. No. He's holy. Totally- you see what you want to see, Brandy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Roll the tape. Nick. <laughs> Editor, zoom in. <laughs> I do this on every episode. What are you talking about? Whatever. I don't like using do you? 0.5s because I don't know. They just don't feel good to me, but I'm, I'm actually, cause I'm torn between a six and a seven mm. on a lot of the same aspects that you guys all mentioned. There is a lot of flaws in this episode. It didn't have as much of the sweet, sweet monster action that I enjoy. Um, that monster is cool, but underwhelming, I think ultimately. So I think I'm going to land at a 6.5 as well because I can't, I can't go one way or the other. So there's a lot of good stuff in this episode, but it, it drags everything else down. It didn't have the cool, like big cliffhanger and en- ending like the other f- episodes have had so far. So it's definitely one of the weaker episodes, but it has a lot of stuff that's necessary. It has so potential. It's tough to move things yeah. along. The ending could contextualize a lot of this. So it's, it, it's kind of it like a lot of the I I agree with you, Alex, that I think the further we get into the show, it's very possible that stuff we learn Mm -hmm. going back to the episode will be like, ah, okay. I hope so. (laughs) Well, I just realized something. Mm -hmm. That that can be a potential solution to how Tim appears everywhere. Uh, The train thing is under the earth that they introduced in uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. Mm. Ah. The ship thing. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the f- mm-hmm. like the freight thing. Maybe that they, they just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of the the stations just, or the outposts just go yeah. straight down and then yeah, yeah, yeah. connect everywhere. Yeah, could be maybe awesome. because then I, I would be I would be more satisfied with how Tim appears everywhere yeah. so quickly. Maybe uh, that'll if, be a great would... little like. How do you keep appearing everywhere, Tim? And he's like, yeah, well, exactly. yeah, <laughs> and they have this secret mm-hmm. thing already. You guys I mean, it, it, it already yeah, introduced okay. those it's, secret it's already tunnels. Secret tunnels. Secret tunnels. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can. I can live with that. But Hello. they probably not going to do that now that I said it. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Boy. So we all pretty much agree that this was not a great episode for the show. I hate so watching far. this week by week. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Rough. I know. I'm like. <sighs> Yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm rewatch this all of it. Y'all convinced me to to hang out with you guys. I would definitely not be watching this. Ah, <laughs> sorry. I would wait. <laughs> but it's cool. It's like Apple was uh they they kindly were like, hey, three months free. And I'm like, thank you. Uh oh, Godzilla, nice. and then goodbye. Any final thoughts before we close out the show this week? They <laughs> need to pick up the pace. Mm-hmm. In, yeah. uh, which I, I, I said that you know I like that they are taking their time of discovering things and not really but like if if they are heading to a certain direction then we're getting to episode 5 mm-hmm. right? yes 5 yes. Yes. so you know that's the halfway mark so I'm really hoping that uh, they're gonna start doing something more Mm-hmm. important i guess mm-hmm. the whole thing like a bit more of the monarch yeah. mystery yeah yeah and, Maybe and a bigger hook if, than we might see godzilla you know yeah yeah oh yeah 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 100 percent. so you know they they need to do something because if if they're gonna leave it to the last two episodes that's already a disappointment i can tell you because it's it's mm-hmm. just gonna be rushed what uh, if the next episode is like this episode except it all takes place in the past but if they do a hard like 1950s only episode, mm. I mean they're not going to. But if that's more Wyatt Russell, I'm okay with that. <laughs> True, give you that. I think regardless, the show really like needs to kind of hint at where it's going ultimately. Because I think of yeah. another show where I was like, God, this is kind of dragging on. It was Midnight Mass, which is a brilliant, <gasps> brilliant show. <laughs> And by you get to the end of it, you're like, whoa, this whole thing was cool. 
And so it's Wait, like, I really hope up. that this I was has ready like, to jump on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Midnight Mass. It's really okay, good. Okay, good, good, good. I think it would be good for, since the next episode should be the midpoint of the series, they should drop a hint at what the ultimate mm-hmm. end game yeah. goal, yeah. bad guy, whatever Pump it's going to be. Like, we need to have something to, to like wet our appetites so we know that we got to Yeah, what around. the point is, right? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we're just wandering around the world looking at monarch stuff, and they ain't telling us nothing. Yeah. yeah. Let's be honest. Mm. We all know where this is going. Tim is the next Time Lord. It's mm, the Doctor Who! Yeah. <laughs> Apple Plus now has Doctor Who. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. It's like, what What does Hiroshi have to do with everything? That's what I want to know. That's the big mm. mystery, ultimately. Yeah, right Hiroshi. now. Right. And how he ties into everything. He well, turns into a monster. Will- Hopefully learn more and find out more next week with episode five. Until then, though, Alex, I'll give you a moment to shout out yourself, sir. So being our guest, check out foreverclassicgames.com for all the the cool things that we do over there. And we just launched that uh, Snyder Cut show earlier today. So we uh, we took a joke and we're going to take a look at all Zack Snyder films hosted by my friend Zack Snyder. So it's it's dumb, but it's it's a lot of fun and we're (laughs) having a good time with it. Very cool. Yes, and of course, it's Godzilla week over on CouchSoup.com. We're going to have Godzilla-based articles pretty much all week long. Uh, Godzilla uh, reviews and movie like hot takes and things. So you can catch all the Godzilla action going on over at CouchSoup.com this week. And you can catch us every week and Tuesdays at 2 p.m. PST. Yes, we have locked in a time, everybody. We have a time. We didn't have one before. You can also listen to us wherever you enjoy podcasts. So thank you everyone for listening this week. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Brandy. And thank you, Alex, for being here and talking all of the non godzilla mm-hmm. some Godzilla stuff. Yes. <laughs> Separately. Yes. <laughs> Again, thank you for joining Couch Soup and the Watching Now podcast. Be sure to check out CouchSoup.com and feed your hungry nerd soul. Mm, delicious. Munchies, Mon- noms and crunch. That was a mm-hmm. munchies and crunchies. And crunchies. <laughs> and crunchies. That's how Brandy <laughs> described the scene in Godzilla minus one. Munchies and crunchies. <laughs> he hungry. Yep. Give him a snack. <laughs>